Hello and welcome to my video. I'm going, I'm going to do a, a quick one today. This is something I painted quite a while ago. I have no idea when. It's totally, um, totally gone from my memory. Um, but anyway, it's uh, the, the usual size that I paint on, 80 by 60 centimetres. Um, I'll put the inches on the screen as usual in a moment. Um, it's, uh, this is just the first stage of the painting. I'm not quite sure how far I'm going to go on it today, but I'm going to keep this as brief as I can. Uh, mostly working on the sky, maybe a little bit of reflection in the water, but if I just show you the sky, you can see that I just use tones rather than blue for the um, large area on the left-hand side. All this up here, this is all made from um, sap green, um, the other one, <laughs> red ochre, and uh, a bit of Payne's Grey. Now, um, it's got a few little specks on it, which is a bit irritating. A few specks of mould. Um, I, I don't know where it's picked it up. Well, I guess it's from the house, you know, it's an old, old French house. Um, there's going to be mould, and there is mould. So uh, it's a little bit irritating because I don't want all my pictures to go mouldy. But anyway, I'm sure they won't, because if they look as though they're going that way, I will move. Now, um, this is just a little bit of oil, linseed oil. Now, this, this is not the way to treat a picture with mould. That's not what this is about. This is just a lesson, so this painting's quite expendable, no matter what I do to it. Uh, just putting a bit of oil over it. Now, that may seal the mould in. I don't know whether it'll kill it, because it'll strangle the bloody... St well. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it seems to hide it, and that's all I want to do at the moment. Not too bothered. But I'm going to put some colour on there, and I think that with glazing, which of course that's what this one's all about, how to how to finish off a painting with a bit of glazing uh, for very quick results. So, um, you know, you may have a painting lying around that you've, you've got to this sort of stage on, and you want to finish it off and make it look good. Well, this, I hope, will show you how to do that. It's not um, a mysterious thing. Glazing is not mysterious at all. All it is, let me find a brush that works. Here's a brush. All it is, is um, applying uh, thin oil paint, which is called a glaze. Now, a glaze, I don't think, has to be thin. It can be thick paint. It just depends on, after you wipe it back, how much you actually leave on the painting. So I'm going to um, pull back on the camera, just a touch, so you can see pretty well everything, I think. And I'm just going to um, put some blue on that top left corner. Okay. Um, if I appear in the uh, video, you'll see that I've got my microphone on my glasses here. So, uh, uh, same as last time, I look like the Borg from Star Trek. Um, but I can assure you I am not the Borg. You don't have to comply. Um, and resistance is not necessarily futile. You probably have to be a bit of a Trekkie to understand that, but uh, quite frankly, who isn't a bit of a Trekkie? Do these people exist? Anyway, I'm sure they do. Right, a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. Let's have that on there. Now, putting a bit of oil on the board to start with is actually not a bad idea with glazing. You don't have to do that. Uh, I don't usually, but um, this time, because of the mould, I'm sort of forced to. And I don't want it to show what I'm working. So there we are, a bit of ultramarine blue up there. It's a very, this is going to be a quick video, I, I can feel it. It's going to be a quickie. Not to the extent where it's one of those, what do they call them on YouTube? A, a short, video shorts. It's not quite that. It's just not going to be awfully long. Normally my videos seem to go to an hour when I painted this one. I don't, do you know, I don't remember if I did this one for a YouTube or whether I did it for a lesson for a student. I, can't, I honestly can't remember, but uh, a painting like this is uh, no more... No more than an hour, usually. I don't feel comfortable when paintings go over. Okay, so there's a little bit of blue on there, obviously. You can see it's blue because it's, um, it's blue, basically. 
Okay, so that's that. That's quite nice. I might stick a bit over on the right hand side, but I'm going to be um, a little bit different. I've also got on my palette some royal blue. Oh, somebody asked me the other day, what's what's another name for royal blue? Well, I've I've heard it referred to as king's blue, which um, sort of suggests royal blue, doesn't it? Really, um, I don't know. You don't have to use the exact same colours that I use. Uh, I just happen to like royal blue because it comes out the tube, ready-made, sky colour. Just shove that down there. There we go. Make a mess. Don't worry about it. Most of it's going to come off anyway. That's the whole thing about glazing. You see, you put the colour on and then you take it off. But you don't take it all off. But you do try to get the cat hair off. I've got cat hair. <laughs> I've got cat hair everywhere. Well, not totally everywhere, but there's a lot of cat hair. There's probably enough cat hair around to make another cat. Um, I, I just thought to say, I know I go on about my cat. So, well, not too often, I don't think. But um, I, I've always liked cats. And the cat is quite fortunate, because through there, the cat has its own room. And how many cats actually have their own room? I don't know. It's not a serious question. Maybe your cat has a room. Anyway, mine does. Okay, so there's a little bit of pale blue. This is going to be one of those videos where I state the obvious many times. Because you know what's going to happen. When I put red on this, I'm going to tell you. And you'll know that it's red because... A, I'll tell you, and B, you'll see. It's actually dead simple. Everything, everything about glazing is incredibly easy. See, now look what happens when I do this. See, because the colours are sort of mixing on there. They've got a nice blend going across because I'm using this. I could use a brush, but um, paper seems to get the effect much faster. All right, I want to take a little bit away along the horizon. And now I've got some blue spots showing. And that, now I hope you can't see it. Maybe you can. That is this expletive mould. And um, it is irritating. OK, so let's take away a little bit of paint here. See, we've got some blue on this white cloud. Let's bring that back. So that it shows through. There we go. That's quite nice. Now uh, up here, all this darkness, I will probably add some some white later. Not to I haven't made my mind up on that totally yet, but um, as you can see, the sky is quite dramatically changed now. I hope I can hide the mould. If you if you maybe you can see it, but seems to be mostly concentrated there, but I can probably lose it by putting a bit of white in there. OK. So let's take away a little bit of the blue there. OK, now the other colour I'm going to use, I'm going to sort of experiment. I've got some um, Japanese red. Now I know that as soon as I mention Japanese red, people start saying, I can't get it, where is it? Where can I find Japanese red? All that sort of thing. Um, well, the, the paint that I use is uh, made by Le Franken Bourgeois. Obviously, it's a French company. Um, and I guess you just have to look on the internet because um, uh, I've never, funny enough, I've never seen it anywhere else. But if you can't get the exact colour, don't worry. You don't have to, don't have to follow the colours I use exactly. Um, you can use something like vermilion. Vermilion will give you a good substitute. Um, the other red that I might use, the, the jury is still out on it, is um, red ochre. Red ochre in a sky can look quite nice. But let's see what we can do with Japanese red. This is Japanese red. 
Well, that's a tube. Japanese red is inside that. And um, if I can get the top off, oh, there we go. I'm going to hold the palette up. You don't need much for glazing. I've probably put a little bit too much on here, but uh, I'm going to show you the colour in a second. OK, Japanese red. It's a very bright red. OK, I think that's probably starting to go into focus. And as you can see, it's dripping. It, it comes with quite a... Well, this particular tube's come with quite a lot of oil in the tube. But anyway, that's, that's the colour. OK. Um, yes, you'll find vermilion is uh, very similar. Now then, let's see what happens when I chuck some red on there. I am going to, as I said, I'm going to put some white along the horizon, but not at the moment. I'm going to just get the red in and see what happens. It's always a little bit of a mystery about what, how it will react to what is already on the painting. It's not, not the biggest mystery around, but uh, it's a, sometimes a pleasant surprise. So oil mixed on the palette with the paint. Ta-da! And I end up with it on here. And um, let's just put that along there. Oh well, that took most of the day, didn't it? Okay, so that's this is the sort of this is the sort of relaxed attitude you need if you're going to use glazing. I think anyway. Not everybody. Some people are so precise with this; they use a brush carefully. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't see the point because I'm going to push it around all over the place anyway. There we are. That's quite interesting. Okay. It's not going to stay like that. I'm going to now get rid of this piece of paper because it's destroyed and I'm going to get some nice pristine paper. There we go. So the, the thing about glazing is put it on, take it off. So let's take a bit off. Just so that we get a little hint of the colour. Push it up into the shadow. That's quite nice. This, yeah, this is. I really hope you can't see it. The, this mould is definitely showing up through the paint. I mean, there is a. There's a. Let me think. There, there's a spot that looks like mould here, but that's not. That's just a bit of paint that got chipped. But um, irritating. So this painting isn't going to last awfully long. It's actually quite difficult to get rid of mould on a painting. You can't just sort of use uh, household mould killer because it'll affect the painting. I have tried in the past, but um, so I won't be going there. But let's just see what we can get. This is really, you know, as I said, it's just demo, just a demo painting, so I'm not bothered too much. I'm bothered, but not over bothered. I've been a lot more bothered in my lifetime. Now, uh, I'm going to get a little bit of white on it, and uh, sort of it, it will subdue the mould a little bit temporarily. Anyway, uh, it'll push the horizon further away. Let's see how that goes. Right, a bit of titanium white. Um, now you you can add oil to titanium white. I tend not to. I'm going to use it. I use it straight from the tube, and that applies to glazing as well. So what I'm going to do, we've got light hitting here. Maybe the light's bouncing about. It usually is. So let's just put some white across there. Bearing in mind, the light must be horizontal because it, it won't be avoiding the landscape. It's not going to go up and down and follow the landscape. It's going to go straight through, like so. Okay, uh, but it can, you, you can, uh, you know, um, it doesn't have to be that small, you can make it, I'm going to make it higher, in fact, to lose, to lose the, f lose the mushrooms. Now then, that's quite nice. There's a few 
pieces left on the trees here, so I'll just take them away. See, see, it's really incredibly easy. There we go. Right, so it's sort of a little bit left on the trees. I'm not a vast amount, but it's um, it's looking all right. Okay, so um, okay, right. Well, a little tip: when you're using white paper with white paint, it will it will get on your hands because you can't see it on the paper. So. Uh, if you're a bit sensitive to paint, maybe that's the time you should use uh, some kind of glove. Now, what I'm going to do here, this is quite fun, I'm really quite enjoying this. I should uh, finish off a few more of my paintings. Okay, let's just have a little bit more white there. There we go. Oh, that's sort of... That's interesting. It's, the, the, um, it's not like, you know, what you'd expect. Uh, sorry, I'll clarify that. This is not what you would expect the method to be, to paint cloud. But of course, you know, you have to realise you don't have to follow any rules. Who wrote these rules about painting? You know, you don't have to sit there and paint every single little bit of cloud. You can. You can paint a sky just with a, you know, pretend you're cleaning the wall. That works quite well. Um, and then, you know, just know when to stop. Let's have a, let's have a little bit more down there. So it's almost the most fun I've had in the last, oh, I don't know how many years. Anyway. Okay, so there we go. Quick clouds. Quick and painless. Maybe that's what I should be teaching. Quick and painless painting. So um, that's looking quite juicy now. I like that. Now the paper's gone this colour. Maybe you can't see it there. It's gone that colour, but that's okay. Because the white's um, straight out of the tube, it's got a little bit of strength to it. So it's going to, you know, if I do that, you, you see that it, um, it's white enough. So I want to get a few tones into this dark area. Dark is okay on a painting. A dark area um, is much more interesting when there's something inside the dark. Just a little like this, like a little hint of something. Let's have a little bit, a little bit of cloud up there, or a change of tone of some kind. Okay, so this is nearing the point when it's expendable, and. Um, let me see, where shall I go next? I think I'll just work on that a bit. It's, it's sort of okay, but uh, I'm going to mute it slightly. See how quickly you can mute it. There we go. Let's tone that down in a couple of swipes. Let's go over the um, that side again. Uh, a, a clean corner of the paper. And uh, let's put in a little bit of... Let me just check that the camera is getting the extreme uh, right hand edge. I'm just going to move you a bit. Oh yeah, you've got it. Okay. Um, so let's have a little bit of that thing there. And a little something down there just for the heck of it, eh? Now, Right, that's all right. I think I'm almost done on the sky. I'm not going to do much at all on the landscape. It's going to be very quick. And um, let me just see what we're going to do here. Am I going to do anything on that corner? Okay, I'm going to have a little bit there. Tiny little bit of light just down there. Just a little something to stop you going off the edge. There we go. So yeah, if you've got a painting that you've um, half finished, have a go at this. And uh, you'll realise how, well, it, 
it's fun anyway uh, it's very um pleasing very quickly so if you want quick gratification this might be the thing to do um still want a little something in here um it, it's a bit like you know a bit like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. You never quite know what you're going to get. So there we are. There's a quick bit of sky. And, and let's just see what we can do down the bottom here. As I said, it's not going to be a lot, so don't expect much. Quick look in the camera before I zoom out. Not keen on that bit. But the rest of it, I think, will do nicely. Okay, let's move you down to the bottom. Now, the only thing I'm going to do, let's get the bottom part of the picture up a bit so it's not all hidden. Right, so what am I going to do? I'm, all I'm going to do is... The, the tiniest hint of red in the water. Now, you wouldn't get a lot of reflection. When water is broken up like this, you don't get a lot of reflection. When, when you have still water, you do. So all I'm going to do is just minute hint, like so. And frankly, I think that's it for that. The only other thing I want to do and I'm really keen to do it. I've just got to remember where I put my palette. Oh, there we are. Okay. Um, now, all I want is a little bit of light green. And I also need a much bigger room so that I can put this palette down. I'll stick it over there. Okay, so light green. What am I going to do with the light green? Again, I'm going to apply it uh, as a glaze. It's a funny, funny term when you think about it, because, it, you know, it's, um, it's not like I'm making it sparkle. You know, you think a, a glaze is something that's going to make it shine. It isn't, it isn't that at all. It's, um, it's just a, a sort of dilution of colour. There's all different recipes you can get, by the way. There's, if you look on the internet, there's no point in me going through it all here, because um, it take me forever, but artists quite often had their own recipes in the past. Um, I don't. I just mix it with linseed oil, which is a perfectly acceptable way of making a glaze. What I want to do is just get a little bit of a little bit of green through there, just to clean it up a bit. A little bit more. You, only, you may not even notice this until I photograph. Oh yeah, no, right, there's a good point. OK, somebody said at the end of my video, quite often, the picture, the final picture, you see it, and it's darker than the video. It's because I use uh, my Nikon camera, uh, and it's a good camera, it's high resolution, and it produces a much better picture. Now, video is not quite the same. I don't have the expertise to um, fiddle with the video to get the colour to match the painting exactly spot on. And, of course, a lot of it is down to the settings on your computer screen too. Uh, they're, all, they're all a bit different. And so there we are. A few hints of green. That's pretty, pretty well it, I think. So um, there we go. And I'll put a before and after on the screen if I can find the original picture. I think that's it. Anyway, there we go. Quick one, much quicker than usual. So, uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, I always have to say this, if you want to come to one of my Zoom classes, see the link below, please like and subscribe. It helps immensely. Um, and if you want to buy a painting, contact me. Uh, this one probably won't be for sale because there's no way I want to sell a picture that's going to have mould on it. It's just, uh, I think it's an unsociable thing to inflict on anyone. And uh, there we are. And I will uh, see you on the next video. And um, bye for now. Take care. 
and see you soon.